Well, a Friday morning, and our first guest this morning is Christian Marr of the Crawford Heritage Foundation. Good morning, Christian. How are you? Good morning. Good. I'm doing all right, despite this weather that's a little <laughs> challenging. How's the ride over? Any uh, any uh, rain or? Uh, not too much. Okay. It, it had apparently blown over, but you know your your glasses fog up as soon as you step out of the car. If you've been running your air conditioning, it makes it a little tough to see. That's right. And it is like pea soup out there. Oh, it's humid and it is rough. It's like walking through a wet blanket. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so what's going on with you? What's uh, new and exciting? Uh, well, we're getting ready to give out grant checks uh today so that's always that's always a fun thing it's always nice to to give out some money instead of just being constantly on the asking side of things which is also not a bad thing but a little more difficult and uh, we just got done with sending out scholarship checks to uh, about 120 i think different students uh, wow across the the county so it's been uh, it's been a fun time uh now we've got to get back into the asking mode and uh trying to fill the coffers back up. I'm sure you, you get uh, thank you letters from uh, folks that, that you've handed those checks out to. Uh, I, I'm sure, you know, when somebody's in need and you guys can come in and, and help provide, you know, something for them, um, that, that's that's nice. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're usually getting those from, from scholarships, you know, students who receive scholarships, because we don't do really any direct aid to people uh, from our grant funds. It's all to organizations who then uh, use that money for different programs and things in the community um, but the, the the young people who get scholarships are always really appreciative obviously of the, the any, any little help that they can get so that further down the road they've got fewer student loans to pay and things of that nature do you hear feedback from some of those uh, organizations you guys uh, provide some grant money to I mean oh, do they always. say to you hey because of this we were able to help provide whatever yeah and those are the stories that we're always kind of looking for because that helps us when we're talking to our donors and saying and demonstrating our impact to them and so it's important for us you know we're we ask for uh, grant reports every time we're we're giving out money so that we can sit, we can look back and kind of quantify how the money's been used that it's been used in the proper way and that it's helped x amount of people or whatever so it, that's a pretty important thing for us to do and I'm sure, as you said, it's easier to go out when you sit with somebody and ask them for money to say, listen, this is this is what happens when you can give some money. Exactly. So there's there's lots of there's lots of things that we're able to uh, to accomplish for people. And that's the fun thing, you know, talking to people and seeing where they want to give and what kinds of impacts they want to make in their community. You know, we're we're talking with a manufacturer right now about a scholarship that they might want to uh, established for their, their employees. I mean, that's a, a nice employee development uh, retention tool that, you know, you nev- never really think about necessarily, but, you know, if you can show your employees that you appreciate them and a little and help their kids go to school or help but the employee themselves go to school and, and expand their, uh, their horizons, you know, I think that's a great thing. It sounds like there's an awful lot of work behind the scenes that you carry out. Well, I, the the hardest thing is, you know, identifying people who have a charitable interest and getting them to know that we're here for them. And so, I mean, that's why a lot of my time is spent with uh, cur- uh, sorry, attorneys, accountants, financial advisors, those types of people who, who have clients who maybe have a taxable event or something where they need to make a charitable gift or a significant charitable gift to kind of offset some some income or something like that or they're just or in the case with most attorneys is they're doing some estate planning with it with someone who you know they might have already taken care of their children in their will and they've got money left over or they don't have any children and they want to have a charitable impact or they're just trying to do something good for their community and those are those are the people that we want to talk to you know it's it's not a a heavy-handed kind of thing we're just we just want to be a resource and to answer questions if people are are wondering well hey can we kind of do this kind of thing you know with our charitable money and and they might need us they might not you know some people just give directly to the organizations that they want to support uh, what we see a lot of the time is people who have multiple charitable intent. So they want to give to the hospital and they want to give to the YMCA and they want to give to the United Way and they want a permanent endowment so that it gives to those organizations every year, year after year. Um, but they don't necessarily have enough to go to a bank and start a trust themselves or something like that. And so we're here to help them out so that we have like, yeah, it's 
your classic one-stop shopping. You can just right. go and <laughs> but but they also get that that expertise behind there, right? So you get actually sit down and, and make time with them to discuss those options, right? And you know, it's it's kind of interesting. A lot of people don't have an immediate uh, organization that comes to mind necessarily, and or they're you know they they have something that's really important to them, like cancer is has impacted their family, and so they're like, oh gosh, well. You know, there's lots of things we can do in cancer. Uh, you know, we've got the Yolanda G. Barco Oncology Wellness Center that's part of Meadville Medical Center that that they could support. They could also do something that was more focused on research. I mean, if they had a, a breast cancer issue, you know, you could do the Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation and focus it more on breast cancer research uh, or the, you know, the American Cancer Society and help people who are getting current treatments and things of that nature. So sometimes it's just helpful for somebody to have a sounding board and to ask some questions and try and see where their interest might lie. Like, uh, I just met with somebody not long ago, and and they were thinking about the Cancer Society, but they settled on the Barco Oncology Wellness Center because they thought they or they had had people in their family who'd gone there and seen the impact that it had in in local people's lives, and they wanted it to make more of a local impact. That's fantastic. Uh, so it's it's nice to know that people have that option that they can sit down. And, and again, you, you could pull out the book probably and say, well, look, here's all the places you could put your money or what interest do you have? Well, and, the, and that's it. And a lot of, you know, we just had uh, a, the, the sad part of my job is I think I've talked about before is, you know, oftentimes, you know, the big impact comes when our donors pass away because they've left something in their will or estate plan or something else. And so that happened to us this week. Oh. Uh, a good friend of mine, Austin Clark, was a, a wonderful donor to the foundation. Uh, super generous man, lived really frugally, would come into my office with his glasses taped together. So, I mean, he, he wasn't spending his money on frivolous things, but he'd write some really nice checks. And so, uh, you know, he he just knew that we were going to do some good things with the money. And so he left money to us on an unrestricted basis, which doesn't happen a lot. So we're really excited that through his generosity that we'll be able to do some great things throughout the county. And, you know, those types of things are, are, are really heartening, even though we're, we're losing good friend, We've lost a good friend of the foundation. But isn't this part of it that just because somebody passes – their legacy can can go on exactly yeah so you know his name goes on his his impact will will certainly have have uh, he will certainly have a continued impact on the community and will do continue to do great things whereas you know if you didn't plan if you didn't put any money away towards charity there's just nothing absolutely so it's a it's a nice thing i think uh you so today's the day you hand some checks out. So today I'm uh, I'm going to be going around Titusville, and you, I mean you may, you're you're probably aware of Shade Tree Commission's issue with the Emerald Ash Borer here mm -hmm. in Titusville. Yeah. So you know that's one of our checks is to put some money towards that. Uh, I think we've got some money towards a, uh, a swing set, which is kind of which sounds kind of fun. Um, that's for my backyard, I think. Uh, no, for oh, no, I, th I think okay. it's out at the uh, out at the uh, uh, recreation camp. Oh, okay, all right. So there's, uh, you know, it's it's all sorts of fun little projects that that we're able to help out with. You know, we sometimes I think we're giving like a little less than two hundred dollars to the historical society just to help them out with a little conference that they've got going on. You know, when, you, when you're handing these checks out, do you think of those people that have passed that have given money to these great causes? I mean, do you think, wow, you know, because of these people in the past, you know, being charitable, the, handing out these checks is just absolutely amazing. Well, just last night I was talking to a friend of mine, Ellie Davies. Ellie is 96 years old, and she knew one of our donors, a uh, woman by the name of Bernie Cooley. And Bernie put money aside to us to focus on children and youth programming throughout the county. And so we got talking about about Bernie, and, and I never knew Bernie, but Ellie did. And so she knew that she was passionate about, about young people and making their lives better. So these are the things that, that, that make you feel good about the kind of work that we do is you're carrying on. For, you're carrying on for somebody and their philanthropy that they were doing throughout their life and you're continuing to make that impact 
long after they're gone. So that's always a, a really hardening kind of thing. I for think us. one of the uh, things that you've mentioned in the past that I found really fascinating was a project that involved a, a small cemetery plot mm-hmm. uh, where uh, it was. I'm not sure. I think you said it was uh, toward being preserved or refurbished or what have you, but there were all sorts of small and wonderful little things like that. Well, yeah, in this most recent round of grants even, we, in Meadville at Greendale Cemetery, they have a monument to the fire chiefs, Mm -hmm. the past Mm -hmm. fire chiefs, and there's a group that, uh, a volunteer group that realized, oh gosh, we haven't updated this in quite a while, and sadly last year we lost uh, Tooney Hendrick, who Mm -hmm. was our our fire chief, uh, suddenly, and so it's really important to me as someone who really respected Tooney to, <laughs> to get his name up on that plaque and to get that refurbished. So, you know, it's, it's all kinds of little things. And it's, and it's usually like small groups of people in our community who kind of come together and say, hey, you know, I see a need for this kind of thing. Like, this is something we're missing or this is something that needs to be better. And how do we do that? And how do we find maybe some support for that? Because most of them, I mean, especially this fireman's group, I mean, they're not professional fire uh, fundraisers. I mean, they they wouldn't know how to get, uh, you know, $1,500 to help build this monument or fix the monument and get it built and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, they but they can write a really persuasive grant application that's a, that explains what they're trying to accomplish and, and get the money that way. And so that's what we're there for. It's uh, 22 minutes past the hour of 8 o'clock. This is the Morning Drill on Stream Television and the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network. So after today, back to going around meeting with, with, with folks, what do you guys have coming up over the next uh, couple months as you get into fall? Well, r- I mean, right now we're, like I said, we're trying to refill the, refill the pot of money. So we're... We do an annual mailing trying to get people to think about making small gifts to the foundation, you know, 20, 25, 100 bucks. And that helps us uh, not only to have some money to give away, it builds our permanent endowments. It also helps us uh, stay in good standing with the IRS and pass something called the public support test, which means that you get a certain amount of uh, money from the public. And that allows us to stay uh, a public foundation as we are and and continue to do all the things that we want to do. So that's where... Uh, yeah, you don't want to take those people off. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Get, you want to keep the IRS on your side right. in, in, in both your personal and professional life. So You could make them a grant. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe yeah. they need it. What if... How much would it take to... No. Yeah. We, we do make grants to uh, municipalities and government institutions at times, so, you know, I suppose it's conceivably possible. Really? Yeah. I, I, I mean, mo- is mo- it- mostly it's, you know, like Connie of Alboro will come to us and say, hey, you know, we're trying to refurbish the basketball courts. And, oh, okay. And, you know, it's, it's hard for some of these smaller boroughs to, you know, raise taxes for things that might be seen as... You know, extras. Do you have two and a half million for Pencrest? <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid no. not. That, 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 that's a whole different political situation, you know. <laughs> Dear Crawford Heritage Foundation. <laughs> but, uh, but truthfully, uh, you know, in this past round of grants, we did, uh, I think we gave them money to the Sagertown, or one of the Pencrest schools for their library. I can't remember which one off the top of my head, but, you know, it, We've done that for a lot of the school districts because, you know, it's a similar situation. You know, mm-hmm. they're trying to do more with less, and it's, you know, it's it, you see a lot. It's the libraries and the schools that, that kind of feel the brunt of that. So, so if a, a police department or a fire department maybe came to you and, you know, said, hey, you know, one of our main computers is down. Yeah, or, yeah. Uh, our, our medical kit needs to be refurbished or something like that. Yeah, we've done those types of things in the past, too. Um, and, and, you know, usually what we're, because we're not talking about huge amounts of money, we're talking about anywhere, uh, you know, the, our grants average about $1,000. So it's about enough to buy a computer or to uh, buy emergency equipment or something like that. You know, we, we get requests from uh, volunteer fire departments and those kinds of things as well when they have, have a need. You know, we, we bought, uh, for Pima Tuning <coughs> State Park, we bought... Uh, ice rescue equipment that they wow. they actually had to use like yeah. just after after they got it 
Um, so these are there are all sorts of things that we can assist with. It's just a matter of folks knowing that we're here, that we're able to do those things, and to you know ask at the at the appropriate time. Which it's will really be. impressive. You cover a very broad scope of needs. Yeah, and and you know we're we're trying to we're trying to be a little proactive about things and think about okay, what's the greatest benefit for the community and. And luckily, you know, we have some great volunteers who make these decisions. I, I'm always quick to say that I don't have any control over where the money goes. You know, we have volunteers in the community who are involved in a lot of different things who review these applications. They know the needs that the community has, and they're really diligent about reviewing the applications, asking good questions, getting clarification when needed and putting the money towards the best possible use that hopefully helps the most people. It has to be neat to see just the the varying degree of of different uh, grants that come your way or or different uh, uh, letters that, you know, requesting money. I mean, people are doing amazing things out there, and I think the needs are amazing today. Yeah, I mean, our... You know, our we've got an aging aging population here in Crawford County. The the uh, the demographics are 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 not great as far as that goes, but you know I think there are some there are some good times ahead of us. We're you know we're still hoping for some oil and gas activity in the next few years that should also lead to some charitable giving. You know we'll have some people who will sign some leases and will need to offset some income with some charitable giving hopefully and if we're doing our job right they'll uh, think about putting that into some permanent endowments you know i think mark was at the start of the summer we heard the the news about the the cracker plant being uh yeah placed down at uh, yeah. beaver uh, when you look at a story like that do you think okay even though that's years away we need to at least start yeah. behind the scenes making sure we're ready for that yeah and, and you read that story i mean it's like we're going to do this within the next 10 years. Right, right. <laughs> so so with that caveat. But, you know, with the the attorneys and people that I talk to who are really close to this see that things will really ramp up. I mean, it might be seven, eight years. Right. But there's going to be a need for, for really good planning. I mean, this is not the kind of thing that you just want to give it away because it might seem like, oh, there's nothing going on right now. I, you know, I, I have... <laughs> what do we what do we need that for right. like, you don't want to start this process seven eight years from now right no I mean you've got to do it right now and start to get people thinking about it and and to know that we can be trusted with their charitable dollar and so we I think we've demonstrated that pretty well in our last 14 or so years but it looks like your framework is well in place uh, right now. It really is. We're trying. You know, there's there's new things you got to think about when you talk about oil and gas. There's liability issues and things, but I think we're I think we know what we're what we're doing, and we've got the experts to help us if we if we don't. I know we we have a few more conversations before the end of the year, but we're sort of on that downhill slope to wrap up 2016. Uh, so far, looking back at this past year, how's it been? Uh, compared to some past years so far the, so far this year pretty good uh, you know it's been an it's been an average year as far as giving so far you know we we do most of we get most of our gifts at the end of the year like most nonprofit organizations do because people get to you know thinking about making charitable gifts around the holidays and things mm-hmm. and so we'll see a lot more as that goes through I gotta um, get rid of this cash before the end of the year well, I'm gonna buy know, a car and give to the Crawford well, Heritage Foundation well you know you've, you've, you've <laughs> You're thinking about next year's taxes and offsetting those sometimes, and and it's just the generosity of the holiday season too that you're that people are giving around that time. So, so we're doing pretty well, and we're also you know we're we're in the midst of waiting on on a fairly sizable estate to come to us. So once that uh, makes its way to us, probably October, uh, we'll have had a, an excellent year. So that's no fantastic. Complaints. Yeah, and uh, are you starting to build that groundwork for the? F- next year or are you still trying to get things wrapped up it, this it's, year it's always you know it's an ongoing process it's always working ahead <laughs> lot, lots of irons in the fire well that's good well christian good to see you this morning yeah thanks again i appreciate it uh you're going to be around for the oil festival weekend I, I, i'm going to be working the wine walk this evening so right. hopefully see. inside Ho- hopefully inside or else i'll bring my umbrella <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, it's great seeing you. Uh, right. Best of luck. How can folks get a hold of you if they have any questions or want more information? Uh, they can always go to crawfordheritage.org or call me on my cell phone at 814-499-1852. All right. Best of luck. Thank you. And we'll see you next month. See you then. All right. Uh, Mark, final look at news coming up next? Absolutely. Yeah, you look ready to go. There you go.